Across the province, Ontario Power Generation provides 70% of the electricity used by Ontario's businesses and homes. OPG strives to advance environmental stewardship by contributing to environmental protection, pollution prevention, and energy and resource use efficiency. Presently, about two-thirds of OPG's electricity is generated by our hydro and nuclear plants. The remaining needs are met by our fossil fuel plants, which play a vital role in providing the flexibility needed in our changing electricity demands. It's very important to people that power is on all of the time, that it's reliable all of the time. Jim Toomey is OPG's Executive Vice President for Fossil. Fossil is able to quickly increase and decrease generation in a way that nuclear and a lot of our hydro stations can do, such as in the summer when the peaks come. Unlike hydro and nuclear plants that are virtually air emissions free, OPG's fossil plants have air emissions including greenhouse gases. These are a byproduct of fossil fuels, coal, oil and natural gas. OPG and its predecessor, Ontario Hydro, have worked to reduce fossil plant emissions to air. We've reduced our acid gas emissions uh, by over 60% since the 1980s, and yet we've produced more energy today than we did at that time. Frank Gerardo is the plant manager at Nanticoke. We've also partnered with a number of community groups in the Nanticoke area to make sure that we're living in harmony with the environment. We continue to look for opportunities to reduce the impact of our fossil stations on the environment. The use of biomass, for instance, is quite important. This is a really good, exciting opportunity to mix biomass with coal and reduce our environmental footprint. Biomass is a great fuel because it is made from renewable and carbon neutral plants. When they're grown, they take in CO2. When they're burnt, they emit CO2 so their life cycle is neutral. That means biomass can reduce net greenhouse gas emissions by replacing some of the coal used in electricity production. In Europe, mixing biomass with coal is already a proven green technology in many countries, such as the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, and Denmark, where some plants routinely displace 10% or more of their coal supply with biomass. Other jurisdictions have uh, developed processes like this because there's a need. Les Marshall is the senior engineer for biomass at Nanticoke. Uh, in North America, we've been a bit lax and it's time to catch up. OPG is testing biomass technology at several locations within the fossil fleet. Here at OPG's Nanticoke station, biomass is already being co-fired with coal. And the test program also includes other OPG sites, including Thunder Bay, Lambton, and Atticoken generating stations. The types of biomass that are most suitable for power generation include woody biomass, such as wood pellets and forestry residues, and agricultural byproducts, such as wheat shorts, the residue from flour milling. Wheat shorts have been tested at Nanticoke since 2006, and in a second phase of testing, biomass silos were built to allow for continuous burns. The scale of the Nanticoke test equipment is small compared to some of the European plants. Uh, most of the systems that you'll see around the world are very similar. They'll involve a dedicated uh, reception system uh, designed to give us some capability to deliver what we call ready-to-burn biomass feedstocks and pneumatically inject uh, dry granular biomass feedstocks meeting up with existing piping that already carries coal to the furnace. The two streams mix together and are conveyed to the furnace to provide its energy input. While there is a lot of work to be done, there is potential in the use of biomass for fuel in Ontario, thanks to the province's rich agricultural base. I think it's a huge opportunity for farmers to supplement their income. Peter Elnitsky is the Manager of Investment Development for Ontario's Ministry of Agriculture. Producing crops dedicated for energy production or using crop residues and produce energy is, is absolutely a market opportunity. In fact, the idea for biomass co-firing came to OPG from Ontario farmer and miller Mark Hayho. We knew in 100 grams how many calories were in wheat bran, so we just did a simple mathematical calculation to get BTUs, which is British thermal units, and knew there was a lot of heat there. He saw the opportunity to get more value out of a commodity that at that time was, was valued very low, and uh, has created an opportunity that I think was in sync with the times. I think there's more potential going forward to even push this further. That sentiment is shared by everyone involved in OPG's biomass co-firing project here at Nanticoke. This is a great project. It's one that's got a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of interest. 
it's a wonderful thing when something like this can happen that benefits the whole agricultural industry. Something that's not only good for the planet, but very good for OPG. It reduces the CO2 impact, reduces the environmental impact, and makes a contribution to improving the environment. Looking ahead, biomass presents many opportunities, but there are also many challenges related to supply, processing, transportation, and storage that must be overcome. Government, agriculture, business, academia, and the community as well as OPG will all have a role to play before we can move to full-scale use of biomass as a fuel. Stay tuned.